Good morning, all. As a part of your computer-aided analysis lab, today let us understand how to solve a 3D trusses problem. The pro problem statement is as defined above. It is to obtain the stress and deformations of our 3D trusses as shown in the below figure by applying the appropriate loads and boundary conditions and solving by using static structural analysis system. And, in, and the second objective is to get the total shear moment diagram for the B members. For this problem, the material has been selected as structural steel and the specifications for the given geometry is as shown in this table, where the length of the surface body is eight meters, the total span of the truss is eight meters. The surface body thickness has been considered as 0 0.02 the cross-section cross -section length of the beams have been taken as 0 0.05 and the pressure applying on, applied on the surface body is 0 0.2 MPa. To solve the problem, let us first launch the ANSYS workbench. Once the ANSYS workbench has been launched, the analysis type that is static structural analysis system has been used to solve the problem. Uh, so select static structural and drop it here on the project schematics. Rename the file as 3D Thrust. So in any FEA, FEA finite element analysis, we, these are the few steps you have to follow. The first step is to define the material, material type. So to define the material type, right click on the engineering data go to edit so this is the material library in this material library select structural steel by default the software has selected structural steel so close the engineering data the next step is to define the geometry to define the geometry right click on the geometry go to new design modulus geometry Once you click on new designers mod, new design modulus geometry, a new window will be popped up. In this window, this window is actually used to create the geometries. You have three principal planes here, XY, ZX, and YZ. Select XY plane, make the plane normal to the screen. Then go to sketch. Before you create the geometry, let us have the grid systems for easy snapping of the points. To switch on the grid systems, go to settings, click on the grids, select snaps, select the major snapping, major grid snap spacing as one meter, minor steps per major, one meter, steps per minor, one meter. So once these grids have been switched on, move to the drawing, select polyline as the total span of the Truss was eight meters. For every two meters, we're going to have a trusses like this. Right click, open end. Now join the top ends. Right click, open end. So there is this sketch of one side. So the sketch has to be converted into line body. To convert the sketch into line body, go to concept, lines from sketch, select the sketch on X, Y plane, and say apply, and generate. So a line body has been created for the sketch that you have drawn. The cross section is not yet defined. So the cross section will be defined at the end. The second is to copy the same truss on the other side with the offset distance of two meters. To copy the truss on other plane, go to create, go to pattern, select the sketch, select the line body and say apply, go to directions, you can click on XY plane for the direction and give the offset distances 2 meters and say generate. You can see the same sketch has been copied on the offset plane. So once these two sketches have been done or two line bodies are done, the next thing is to connect the top, uh, create the upper beams. 
to create the upper bins we need to offset this zx plane in the y direction for 2 meters so click on zx plane go to new plane zx plane transform in y direction not by z direction here it is not zx it is y explain y z explain okay. z direction give the value as 2 meters say generate a new plane has been created with the offset distance of 2 meters then you go to sketch again go to settings switch on the grid systems the way done before with one meter spacing then go to draw take line option and to connect the top ends Once the lines have been drawn, we have to convert again the sketch into line body. Go to concept, lines from sketch. So go to offset plane, select the sketch that you have created. Then say apply and generate. So we are going to get a single line body connected with all the three sketches. Now the cross section has to be defined. To define the cross sections, go to concept cross-section rectangle give the values of the cross-sectional area or uh, cross-sectional length that is 0 0.05 in B value and 0 0.05 as the H value so once the cross-section is defined go to line body again and select the cross-section that has been defined so a cross-section a cross-sectional area has been applied to the created truss next is to create the surface body to create the surface body select zx plane zx plane now you go for sketch again go to settings switch on the grid system for easy snapping So once the grids have been created, go to draw, take the rectangle option, select from the origin to the end point. Now to create the surface body, go to concepts. In concepts, surface from sketch, select surface and sketch, select the sketch that you have select created, apply, give the thickness value as. 0 0.02 and say generate a surface body is created this completes with create creation of the geometry so once the geometry has been created you can close the geometry window now moving to the model in model is used to specify the boundary conditions load conditions and also to discretize the model right click on the model Go to edit. A new window will be popped up. And this GI is used to define the boundary conditions, load conditions, and also, also to discretize the 3 d model that has been created. So since you have two different geometries here a connection has to be developed between the line body and the surface body the line body and the surface body will get intersected at the point of contact so a connections has to be given for providing the connections go to connections right click insert manual contact region in manual contact region contact and target has to be defined to define the contact first switch make silver for, uh, for convenience let us hide the surface body keeping the line body 
visible now go to contact take the vertex filter now select the points by controlling the by pressing the control select the points where the line body gets in contact with the surface point once the points have been selected say apply now to select the contact body target to set the, uh, select the target let us hide the line body and make the surface body visible so go again to the contact in target select the edge filter select the these two edges and say apply so now you can see a contact has been developed between the line body and the surface body once the contacts have been created the next thing is to define the appropriate load conditions boundary conditions so to create the appropriate load and boundary conditions right click on the static structural go to insert here if you go back to the problem statement one edge of the truss has been fixed in all degrees of freedom the other one has been given the displacement boundary condition in which it is constrained only in the y direction and the load that is nothing but the pressure is acting on the surface body with the magnitude of 0.2 MPa. So let us go to the FEA model. Here in static structural, right click, go to insert, go to fixed support. In fixed support, selecting the edge filter, select this edge and say apply. So this will make this edge to get fixed in all degrees of freedom. The next thing is to go to insert, go to displacement, select the other side of the edge, say apply. Now in Y component, you select as constant. So as soon as you give the constant value of zero, it has been restricted to move in the Y direction. The next boundary condition is the to apply the pressure acting on the surface body right click go to insert select the pressure on the surface body say apply give the magnitude as 0 0.2 0 0.2 mpa so by this we have created we have given all the required boundary conditions the next thing to discretize the model to discretize the model go to mesh right click and you say generate mesh by default the fea will calculate its own element size and it will going to discretize the model to change the mesh size you can redefine the element size here right now it is 500 millimeters i can define it as 250 millimeters and say generate mesh so the number of elements have got increased now let us solve the problem before solving the problem we have to define what type of solutions we want so let us say we are interested in getting the total deformation of the truss we are also interested to get the stress distribution that is one mesh stress distribution of the model next thing is to get the beam solutions so select the beam tool once they all the solutions that you want has been selected right click on the solution and say solve so the problem has been solved to find the deformations just click on the total deformation one message so uh, uh equivalent stresses to get the equivalent stress on this uh, surface body just click on the equivalent stress direction stress combined stresses maximum stresses to get the shear force bending moment shear moment diagram 
So a procedure has to be followed like go to solution, go to insert, go to beam results, shear moment diagram. In, to get the shear moment diagram, we have to define the path or the members on which we want the shear moment diagram. To define the path, right click on the geometry, go to insert, sorry, right click on the model, go to insert, construction geometry, in construction geometry, again right click, insert, path. In path, you have different options to define the path, two point edge and x axis, select the edge option. Once the edge option is selected, then pressing the control, you can select the members on which you want the shear, shear moment diagram. Say apply. So this is the path on which the shear moment diagram will be drawn. So select shear moment diagram now, select the path that you've been created. Then go back to solutions. Say right click on the solution evaluate all results now click on the shear moment diagram so you can find the shear moment diagram for the members that you have selected so this is the total shear force this is the total bending moment diagram and this is the total displacement so this is the procedure used to solve the 3d trust problem in ansys workbench thank you